All right, what's up, you guys? Getting scapegoat here, and I'm here to do. Or we're here to do a uh, nice like search, bro. I believe this is episode 11, and instead of a 32, I have a special guest with me. Uh, you can introduce yourself. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> hey guys, uh, this is uh, the Undead Keeper. That's my uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, but you guys can just call me Raph. Yep, we have Raph, aka the Keeper, on the show today. Uh, apparently, there's somebody else that likes grave keepers. I'm glad that I'm not the only person on planet Earth. Oh, dude, don't worry. I know a few people. <laughs> Yeah, what I remember you saying like you had like five different builds of GKs or something like that. When uh, what was that guy's name? Uh, yeah, more or less. Oh, but when Frazier uh, had made it big. Or no, Maddie or whatever. Or Maddie, oh, Maddie's Maddie Daddy Twelve. Yeah, Maddie's yeah. Daddy Twelve. Awesome. A big shout out to him. Yeah. He was definitely someone that really surfaced me out and uh, got me like twenty or thirty subscribers just from his one video. So much appreciated. If you guys don't already know him, go to Maddie's Daddy Twelve on YouTube. Sub to him. Great guy. Still does the spotlight and always has da random different decks up on there. Well, it sounds like he's a cool guy. I mean, I remember, um, I remember Capital G. He gave me a guest upload like around four months ago, and I got like seventy subs out of it. I was just sweet, out. bro. Yeah, I, I did. Um, I don't know, one of my one of my staple decks. Uh, at least it was. I'm gonna start doing it again. Um, one of my staple decks was a deck called Jogging Field Control. Where it was just like a spell lock deck without uh, special summoning. It was really cool. And, um, Safe zone Jalgen, I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I love that deck. So I so I just I posted on there. I, or I said capital G. It was it'd be cool if you gave me a guest upload? He said if you want to do a deck profile, pick something unique. I was like, well, <laughs> it was either that or my virus deck. So. Yeah, so... I think, I think the Jalgen deck was fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I remember I got a comment from uh from I. I'm not going to say the guy's name. I'm not giving him any publicity. His name is... No, wait. I'm not giving him any publicity. What am I doing? No, um... <laughs> what, some guy left a comment, and he said, this deck sucks. And then I looked under his, uh... Like, his recent activity, and, like, every single comment was, like, trolling Slim or trolling Vexy or something like that, saying, you suck, your videos suck. And I was like, really? <laughs> Clearly, uh, someone has nothing better to do in their day. Yeah, I love it. So... Uh, we have a we have plenty of different topics. We're probably gonna end up talking about GKs. I'm not gonna lie. We're probably gonna end up talking about GKs. Uh, hey, I have no problems talking about GKs for now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, especially Sinewa. I'm so glad we have a good boss monster. It's about fucking time. Uh, uh I I'm not hyped about the new support that they're getting. I'm really not. Really? Um, I think Sinewa. The new guy they have has one really good effect, and then two semi decent ones or semi okay. One one's okay. Except for this is a format of not really setting stuff. I mean, unless um, you're unless you're playing against like Gear Gear or something like that. So yeah, I can get that. Yeah. Uh, but the two thousand uh, attack and defense loss that is definitely a great effect. That is the a monster problem. Effect. Yeah. The problem with it is that he's a three tribute monster, or basically it's a one tribute you get one effect. But his stats are pretty much mirrored of Visionary, and Visionary just is so much better overall yeah, because yeah. he gains the power. He can protect himself. Um, but Wait, that's what I keep hearing. Those I keep hearing that people are like, "Well, Sydney, or no, the uh, visionary is somehow better just because of." Oh no, we have an internet connection. Wait, can you still hear me? Oh, I'm hearing you fine. Okay, because I, I, it said internet connection. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. No, so they, they say that the visionary is better because it could protect itself. But here's the funny thing about that is that I don't see it that way just because with 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 the visionary with GKs the yeah like I have to explain to you but like to anybody that's at, the thing about GKs is that they're best at putting their resources on the board. Like when you have a spy and a bunch of back row, you're not keeping that spy in your hand clearly. You know about nine about ninety nine times out of a hundred you're going to set that spy. And the thing is, is that Visionary, its effect is that you need a discard cost to activate its effect, which, in my opinion, is really counterproductive to what Gravekeepers really do best. But it is. Yeah, that's how I see it. I was say but here's the When you're playing Visionary, you're usually playing builds that are going to best suit him specifically. Unless you're doing it with, like, Magical uh, or Magician Circle, where oh, yeah. you're just going to yeah. cheat him out real fast. And then... <laughs> You get there. If not, you're just going to stell him back eventually and go tribute search with Recruiter because that's the good play. Yeah. Recruiter, you instantly feed for him and then you protect him right away. 
Uh, like I, I, um, I only played. I've only played one build of Gravekeepers in my entire life, and I've I've had to probably play at least like five or six different variants, where Visionary was actually suitable, or where Visionary actually did something. And it was this weird ass build where I took Visionary, I put Caius in there, I put Magical Dimension in there. I just had all these weird cards, and somehow it just it just uh. <laughs> it just it just worked, you know. So I don't know. I <laughs> that's the only build that I've seen Vision. Caius. Kai Caius is just badass. Actually, for a while I had Dark Dust Spirit because, like, if anybody's ever seen my channel, they know how much I love spirits. And I just I randomly threw him in there. I was like, yeah, why not? And it actually worked. Because well, when... my builds with it uh, on my channel, you'd see if you saw the old ones. I made like a meta build a while ago. Uh, I was actually playing a chief in it. I was playing one oh, to God. two chiefs because here was the thing: <laughs> it was all about me being immune to Necker Valley, but yeah. still screwing my opponent. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. There was like two, I had like two to three visionaries because I was playing trade ins as well. I was playing dad, chiefs, um, <laughs> anything that I, I like. I was playing a lore at that time, Sangan at that time. Anything that could work with it, I was making sure it was in there because I was gonna find ways to cheat it out. Playing three right of spirit, <laughs> it, it was bananas. And yes, I did play three stealth. <laughs> See, that's always something that crosses my mind is playing three stealth, but. Um, then, then a build I played, I played, it was, uh, it was like Chainburn Switch Up, and it was like one of the most fun things ever, because game one I would play Chainburn, and they would lose, they would just lose, flat out, because you always win game one with Chainburn. Asshole, because you're playing Chainburn. Well, yeah, and then game two, you switch out all the burn, and th this Capital G's idea, by the way, he played with Insectors, but, because GKs are my favorite deck, I put in, I instead, I sided in 15 Gravekeeper cards, I put in three Valleys and two Descendants and all that. And it completely screws over your opponent just because you, they have no idea what to do when they're facing, let's say, you know, two uh, two D walls, uh, you know, a Necker Valley and a Spy set. Usually, you're not going to win that game, you know, unless they're, you know, unless they blaster pop it or something like that. But uh, I, I think it's it's funny, like the different variations of Gravekeepers that you can just find because most people just play the standard, you know, one assailant, whatever. But it's funny, like. People don't give the deck enough credit, in my opinion. Well, here's one thing where I can say that Visionary might see a small comeback. Uh, six cents is legal. That is the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, six cents in every deck, and you probably have five to six cards now in your hand, pending you in the dice roll, because let's face <laughs> it, unless Konami starts selling dice now and they force you to use it like where Magic has the thing where they make you use their tokens so that you know what they are, they make you use their dice so that there's no cheating in anything. Unless Konami starts taking that path, there are going to be loaded dice floating around on the number six. Oh, God. I just, I, I don't get it. I don't get the logic. Like, oh, hey, no, this is exactly, I, I made a video about this, so I'm probably going to post it tomorrow or something like that. Um, but here's the thing, though, is that this is uh, Konami's defense. They said that they had made they they were making six cents legal because quote um, you can draw your win condition or you can mill it to the graveyard and lose. Oh like, really? No 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 no. Oh my god. It was like, no, 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 no. Okay, apparently you've never heard of E-Dragons, Dark World, <laughs> you know, uh, Dragoonities even to an extent, Infernities to an extent, Light Swarms, you know, that's five right off the top of my head. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, God. Like, that, that's that's embarrassing right there. Yeah, I will not play Six Sense. <laughs> The one day. <laughs> I like, yeah, Frog Monarchs, that was the one I was forgetting. Frog Monarchs can also use that, too. Like, it's... Oh, six. yeah, like use six cents. It's just that's that's embarrassing. Like that is just flat out. Like Konami, you must have drank the bong water when you were thinking of that idea. I'm. I swear, if if there's one deck that's gonna call not five or six, it's Infernities. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Play it. They're just gonna call one or two. Oh yeah, but I mean, regardless, it just it works with just about every deck. I think it's just the dumbest idea ever. Wait, what are we doing? Giving Chainbird six cards? Sweet. Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the only deck I can maybe not see playing it is hang on, hang on, is Countdown because it, you, are you can't. Me? Hang on, hang on, because you can draw it, but if you lose or if you miss it and you mill six cards, you're fucked. 
in more well, cases. you're never going to mill six, and you're never going to mill five because you're always going to call five or six. So you'd be milling a maximum of four cards. Okay. And now at that point, usually if you're smart, you're not activating that card without a previous countdown already being played. Keep in mind that we're talking about count of resources. Keep in mind that we're talking about countdown players here. Oh, yeah. I went there. <laughs> I understand this. I used to play Countdown. Oh, I, I think we've all played Countdown. I just played it on Unrated because I don't like people well, to play. I mean, I actually had one of my old videos that I called uh, the Forbidden Countdown. What? Yeah. I built a deck that has Exodia and oh. Final Countdown because I'm going to be drawing all the cards anyway. It's like, uh, yeah, so if I don't get the 20 turns, hopefully I beat you with Exodia. That's actually smart. I've never heard of that. Well, the problem is you don't have a lot of the, the answers, so you're not going to be playing a bunch of the Swift Scarecrows or all those things because you lose out on five cards. Yeah. Because you're not going to be searching for the pieces. You're just going to coincidentally be drawing them while stalling. <laughs> and that you get stall plus card, stall plus card, stall plus card. That's that's actually a smart idea. I'll have to play that. On unrated. Yeah. Don't everybody hate. I, I'll do it on unrated. <laughs> like, I I enjoy like playing, I enjoy playing troll decks, but um, but only on unrated. I don't like people that play like. Oh man, I used to play that in rated. <laughs> Have you ever seen Millburn? Oh, you see, you talked about that in your uh, one of your I don't remember, but I remember uh, you talked about that in a few videos. Yeah, I had a few deck lists uh, written <laughs> up on there. So if you guys actually check out my channel, you're gonna see a bunch of different deck lists. <laughs> <laughs> also, you'd have to check out my old channel that had some of them on there. Let me guess, was it LP Fan for... Daddy video? Yeah. Well, the uh, Matt... Yeah, it was under LP Fan for Life 1. Yeah, had um, that, saw that coming. But it's it's on my <laughs> channel. Like, you'll see the links, whatever, if you go there. there's So there's two pages you can look at that have the different things. Let's put it this way. I was playing Millburn when <laughs> Duality was like a $100 card, and it was at 3, and plants were like the big deck. Oh, God. So I decided to troll at my tournament. I ended up getting top 16 in a duality tournament. <laughs> oh, my and God. And I beat every matchup. I didn't lose to Sam's. <laughs> I did not lose to Sam's. But I lost to Plants every time because they drew True Nate. They drew um, Royal Decree in the sideboard. Oh. And I also never drew Skull Imitation against Plants. If you're not familiar with Skull Imitation, let me explain what it does real fast. Mm -hmm. For each card sent to a player's graveyard, that player will lose 300 life points per card sent. Oh my god. Continuous trap card. <laughs> that ran three. Uh, that's, that's... So it's like, wait, but you're burning yourself. Oh wait. <laughs> Their entire deck mills. <laughs> That'd be great against that Light Swarms. Is... That'd be great against Light Swarms. Oh, dude. I smashed Light Sword. It was the best. <laughs> it's like, go ahead. Go ahead. Play it. I dare you. I dare you. Play it. Go ahead. You want to play JD? Oh, wait. That's right. Priority? No, 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 no. We sell a morning. <laughs> it's, it's, in, it's in the graveyard. Oh, what's that? You got another one? Cool. Baylor. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that, that's that's great. I mean, I the only deck that's like the only troll deck I continue to play is uh, is is Lockdown Exodia, and that has got to be hands down one of my top five favorite decks of all time. Like Lockdown Exodia, you play you know Imperial Customs, Scrub Raid, Metal Reflect Slime, Dark Bribe, and then you just get emissaries and nimble mangas and just get your pieces and increase your life points. It is the most fun. You're just. You're just asshole altogether. Oh, yeah, no problem. <laughs> I'll, I'll own up to that, yeah. No, um, the, 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 the idea is, well, we're just shouting a bunch of channels today, aren't we? Um, the channel, the, 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 the idea came from uh, a guy on YouTube, Xavier the Tormentor. I've talked about him in a couple of videos, but he has made his channel known by running Lockdown Exodia. Like, he's an alternate win duelist, but his main deck is Lockdown Exodia, and he has, like, video after video of him beating, like, dragons or light swarms and all these different decks that you think would you know you should lose to and he just like demolishes it because i mean when you're facing you know skill drain imperial custom <coughs> excuse me imperial custom metal flex slime dark bribe and whatever else you know you're not going to win that game you're just not Even before you run into a beast king barber <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, even with Beast Kid Bar, like, it's just fun. Like, uh, when you're, when, um, like, I played it myself plenty of times. Like, when my opponent, you know, okay, Prohibition, call MST. 
And then when they try to like, uh, they try and pop, pop like blaster pop your uh, your your metal flex line to go for game, just flip Imperial Custom. It's like, yep. Fuck. I mean, then trap stun, but okay. <laughs> you see, it's amazing. A lot of people are not playing trap stun, but again, that's what the bribes uh, are for. That's actually been changing. By me, everyone's playing trap stun and dragons right now. It's either royal decree in the side. Or a main trap stun with two more in the side. You see, Capital G made a video talking about decree why it needs to go to one. I completely agree. I don't think I can. I it. agree. Regardless of I'm me just hating the card. Oh yeah. I think that card is just too powerful to be at three. Yeah. I mean, it like, needs to at least get semied. At the very least, it needs to get semied no, and it, trap stun as well. Or yeah. decree to one and, and stun at three. That's fine. To me, trap stun is the equivalent of of cold wave, and cold wave is banned. So. I mean, yes and no, because you still get the spells, but yes, I understand the, the philosophy behind it, but yeah. we quick play spell cards like Exeancor, like uh, Book of Moon, yeah, uh, Forbidden Chalice, which stops the Black Rose, but I'm actually thinking about putting back into my side deck for Gravekeepers for Dragons is Forbidden Chalice, because now I know they're playing Trap Stun, I know I'm going to need the spell cards, and I'm not playing a Veiler. I'm sorry. Mm. Even with one tribute, I'm not playing a hand trap. <laughs> it just there's that one chance that it'll happen. Yeah, I mean, I side. Um, I believe I side uh, Valors in my or no, I side Maxis. I'm pretty sure in my Gravekeepers. But um, like, <laughs> but to me, it's it's fun. Like like side decks. There's so many different cards you can put in a side, especially with Gravekeepers. Like the potential is really unlimited. Like there's so many things you can add to it. Really, <laughs> there's so many good cards you can have. Like. Recently, I went to an Xbox tournament that we did uh, at my local. Um, after their OTS, they had an Xbox tournament. Hmm. Um, but what I did was I had a makeshift sideboard because I didn't have my other stuff. So instead of having like two summon limits and two uh, goes and matches, I had a royal prison, one summon limit, <laughs> one in match. <laughs> A one uh, spell shattering arrow. Oh, you love that spell shattering arrow, don't you? Well, I mean, hey, if I know the one deck I'm really gonna have problems against is gonna be uh, Fire Fist, then yeah, that Fire one Fist. arrow plus three MSTs. It's gonna do the trick. I see and, the th the thing. I've never really had a problem with, with Fire Fist. I mean, yeah. You know, well, it's it's a be it's really just who draws better, like who's drawing the early control. But now with like. With us losing a second torrential and a second bottomless, that uh, one bottomless. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> it's it's really it's really detrimental to us specifically against that deck because they have more plays over time because they can get two summons per turn. Well, like I side in. Like, I don't really have much of a sideboard for Fire Fist because, like, I, like I said, it's like it's. I don't draw that great, but I mean, usually I, I'll have it's a rogue deck. Now it's considered a rogue deck. Yeah, That's I don't why. get that. It's a great deck, you know. Or, I'm not understanding it. You know, it's like oh, it's because it's because of the E Dragon matchup. If uh, you're yeah. not going to beat E Dragons, you play E Dragons. But that's why <laughs> I play Gravekeepers because it <laughs> smashes E Dragon. <laughs> Started in uh, Dragon Ravine, and now it's like, well, now the potential to get two owed by the deck is actually quite high. Well, you see, like when I I side deck for in my side deck, I play. Um, the at least two and two, two goes and two skill drains, and I'm probably gonna bump that up to three and three just because it's so good. People say that like I, I've heard, I've legitimately heard from people that are like, you know, skill drain does nothing against e dragons. Yeah, tell me that to a Draco sack that's just sitting there waiting to be, you know, descended popped or whatever. It's just it's that, I, that my logic too. Yeah. Um, with the skill drain, but my my thing is the only thing I'm really worried about them. Is when they go debris dragon for a black rose. Yeah. Or when they have Dracosac. Those are literally my only problems with that deck. But those answers can easily be attained by playing Forbidden Chalice, which is why I think I'm just gonna go back to Chalice instead of Drain. Drain's a great card. It's still gonna smash like Light Sworn matchups and everything, so I might <laughs> keep it in there. But in terms of like the spell shattering arrow, I might drop that now. Um It's like you're I, I think we should be playing summon limit at two. Absolutely. Because dragons can't deal with that without a trap stun or a space. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. I mean, like with my deck or with my side deck, uh, I'm probably gonna say I had a Thunder King in there just for like the spellbook matchup. But the thing is, like, I don't have problems with spellbooks. I, I, I don't, you don't need it in there. We yeah. don't we don't have problems with spellbooks. You know what my answer to spellbooks is? Anti spell fragrance. You lose <laughs> yet? 
It's like, I, 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 my side deck, like, I'm going to take out the Thunder King. I play three Dinas in my side deck just because it, it just so, I have so much hate for, for E Dragons and for decks that just will, you know, spam the board. It's like, okay, now I'm going to attack for game. Lol, JK, Fossil Dina, you lose. It's just, it's hilarious. It's the problem, though. Here's, here's what I don't like about that. I tried at Nationals two years ago to play three Dinas. I played two in the main and one on the side. The third one, I almost never sided in. It was very cloggy. I don't like three. I still like two. I still main two. <laughs> you still main two. Uh. Absolutely. Because here's the thing. Unless they're playing some really weird... Unless they're playing the plant version of dragons, they have no answers because they're not playing card troopers to a normal summon dino without using blaster's effect. And if I can successfully get them to use blaster's effect... That's two cards they lose to take away one card on my side of the field before they can make a play again. <laughs> like, here's the thing: is like uh, I'm, I'm, I kind of want to tweak my side deck a little bit. Like, um, and the thing is that there's so much that Gravekeepers do against E Dragons. Like, you know, I, like the Dinas, the Skill Drains, the Gozens, the, you know, whatever you want to call it. It's just that GKs. There's such, you know, and under you know there's such an under the radar deck it's like it, it just top eight at a regional i mean just because it's it's good and like people don't give it its props you know like the side deck you know and on top of that necro valley probably the most arguably the most dynamite field spell in the game right now it's just, it's it's such an underrated and undervalued deck i i 100 agree this is not with a bias this is straight knowing that why play the meta and spend so much money on the meta deck because you're going to be spending three to four hundred dollars just for the main deck in dragons, when each one is about five dollars at the minimum, and you <laughs> place just about each of them except for title. You know, like I think it's hilarious though, just because people are like, oh my god, it's spelling like good. I I literally used to go to a locals and this guy spent two k on his deck. It was like over two thousand dollars for his deck, but it was like it was all ghost rares and stuff. But I, I just sit there and I think, you know what? I don't. I'm not a rarity whore, and I actually I don't like using that term, but. You know, like I, I don't, I'm not much for rarities, but the only deck that I have that's hollowed out is is Gravekeepers, and I'm still trying to hollow that out. Like all the monsters and Necro Valley. Oh, define hollow out. Do you mean like highest possible rarity? No, I mean, uh, I, I think that uh, Gravekeepers' highest rarity is Ultra, isn't it? Well, here's the thing. Yeah. My hollowed out Gravekeepers right now is not my preferred one. Like the Ultra Valleys, as nice as they look, yeah. they too much. I don't want to draw that card. I they, want to search for that card. They what too much? They they stack too much to the top. Really? I've never noticed that. Uh, when you start drawing two valleys every game, you'll <laughs> notice it. Oh, I play. Uh, oh, I play. I actually prefer my supers. I have two German supers and an English super that I normally play, but my friend has them right now. Just like my spies, I am using a super and two ultras. I don't like the ultras at all. I have three super spies. A German, well, actually I have four, an English, a German, a French, and an Italian. I use the German, the French, and the Italian for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean by hollowed out. Like, I'll take the highest amount rarity. Like, I have three first dead secret dualities. I have two ulti first dead warnings. I have two first dead, one Spanish, one Portuguese mirror forces. I have a gold French torrential, like those, those kinds of things. But then again, the gold and the ultra, those are just like preference picks. That's your call. Yeah. Like for the gold, I wrote as to the secret. It, it really just depends on what you like. So like if you want super dualities, that's cool. You get super dualities. What, it, what just pisses me off is that Stell hasn't been reprinted. That, ever. yes. And it hasn't been reprinted as a rare or super that it deserves to actually be. I think it would look cool as an ultra or whatever. I, I, I've not seen one ultra, you know, still. I, or... I believe it would be an all right looking ultra. I don't believe it deserves to be an ultra. Then again, Silver Fang's an ultra, so who are we kidding? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it absolutely deserves to be a rare in terms of what it does for the deck. It also deserves, in my opinion, that it should be a super. Yeah. For what it does for the deck. Yeah. So I... it getting reprinted in Astro Pack is a super. Or unfortunately, Astro Pack is a common. But it needs to be reprinted, and it should be reprinted as either a rare or a super. 
I, I, I just wanted to I just wanted to be an ultra just so it'll match all my, all the rest of my GK shit. Like I've I have ultra tributes. Actually, I accidentally bought three tributes. Like this is back in January when I when I like was trying to hollow out all my GK stuff, and I got three ultra uh, tributes. And then I was like, wait a minute, tributes at two. I was like, well, at least I have an extra one. And now that it's down to one, just wow. But like, now they're just sitting there in a in my in a binder or not in a binder in a, in a deck box that I can't use now, which is. Just... Completely fine. You know why? Because at least you didn't get it in a different language. <laughs> I have a German one that I just don't use now, a German Ultra. Whereas I have my French Ultra that's still in the deck. Why? Because the card says Sacrifice Royal. Yes. <laughs> I put Sacrifice Royal. <laughs> that sounds cool. That should be, that should be, that should be, an, there should be, they should make another GK card. It's going to be Sacrifice Royal in its Royal Tribute without Valley on the field. <laughs> Nah, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. That'd be way too good. Here's what I'd like to see in terms of support for Gravekeepers. Here's a card that they would absolutely, they absolutely need this because of every other deck being able to like, their field spells aren't essential to them. Gravekeepers need their field spell. Mm -hmm. Essential. They can win without it. It's just very tough. Yeah. Because they have effects that base around it, like Royal Tribute, Assailant, um, different things. Yeah. That's, here's a card and an idea that I came up with that I would love to support. A spell card that says, um, "Activate this card. Uh, this card is unaffected by the effects of Necro Valley. You can, uh, when you activate this card, um, you can put one Necro Valley, uh, discard one Gravekeeper card, uh, Gravekeeper monster or Gravekeeper card to the graveyard. Uh, if you do, not if you do, obviously when you do, um, <laughs> put one Necro Valley back from the graveyard into the deck." Shuffle it, draw one. That's so. Yeah, it's a minus one. But, but yeah, <laughs> Stell is a card. Yeah, so, I, feed the Stell, get back a Valley that they probably popped on turn one, thinking you have a tribute. <laughs> the Stell immediately draw a card. Now you have Necro Valley back in the deck, so Commandant isn't dead anymore. And now you can play the Stell, which you can play three Stells if this card comes out, if they ever make it, which would be an awesome idea. And it should be a super rare at the minimum. I'll take it as a secret rare. I don't care. See, it's worth money. People will think it's a shitty rare. They're not going to give it any mind. It'll be like a $5, $10 secret. I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll pick them all up. I'd play only one, though. It, it'd only be a one of because you don't want to draw it that often. It really doesn't do too much outside of giving you the one field spell. And they're only playing three ravines, and you're playing four gravekeeper, uh, four necro valleys. It gives you that fourth chance to beat, even if you play the first field spell. See, I've never heard of you know, well, like when I I've heard of plenty of people that you know want to talk about GK support. You know, they think, oh my god, they need like a keys on kind of monster. I'm like, no, I think I think their monster monster lineup. All right, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, um, I think that their monster lineup, you know, overall A to Z, I think is pretty solid. I mean, I like that Sneo is coming out. I'm adding, or I'm playing, I think, two of them in my deck. Um, here, let me check. But um, overall, their monster lineup, yeah, I'm playing two Sneo. Um, I think that overall, the monster lineup for GKs is, is really solid, just A to Z. I think that they they, sh they don't need to touch it anymore. But I, th I feel that, you know, they deserve... You know, some kind of support spell wise. I like your idea of the whole. You know, put a put a valley back into your deck and draw a card. You know, be like a uh, like a mini 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 avarice of some sort. You know, it's it's you know you have to discard okay. your the monster. Yeah, you have to discard a GK card or monster. You know, get that valley back, but it's still a minus one. But it does help you in a sense. You know, you might not even draw the valley. So I like that. The fact that it makes other cards live is what I like about it. Like, we have Moray of Greed. All right, send three water monsters back, draw two cards. That, that's bullshit. Oh, no, it's, it's uh, send two waters back, draw three cards. Or, yeah, that. So it's an even. But at the same time, you're hand filtering. Yeah. It's it... <laughs> um, I just, I don't like the fact that... And, you know, up until this point, I, I always felt the GKs were kind of a forgotten deck. I'm glad that they're that they're getting support now, and I'm glad that people are starting to see them as as the deck that that at least in not in my opinion it deserves to be seen as as an anti meta oh. deck that people don't really give a chance. You know, and like I'm glad that older decks, you know, like Black Wings, are starting to come back. You know, I like that these older decks are starting to be seen as they should be. I'm really happy Black Wings are back. 
I want to see how many dumb people actually play three whirlwinds. <laughs> what do you mean? I do play three whirlwinds. What are you talking about? Oh, here's here's my idea. You should probably only play two whirlwinds. Nah. Real. Yes. Opening whirlwind is great. Whirlwind. Yes, you want to open whirlwind. I am not a huge fan of having a card that's pretty much dead in my hand. Well, that's so, well. You play three Necker Valley to be fair. Yeah, but here's the difference: that card can win games by itself. Fair enough. Whirlwind do that without the extra support. So let's say you open up double Whirlwind turn one, uh, and you open up nothing with it, or you open up one card. Okay, play Whirlwind. Play Whirlwind. Summon. Double search. Okay. Well, now I've taken up two spots, and I have two dickless cards on the field. <laughs> <laughs> to me, uh, actually, I think Capital... feel that you run out of cards, they're not even going to bother trying to pop those Whirlwinds because it doesn't bother them. What bothers them is the other back row that you may or may not have now. See, I, I completely disagree. A lot of times when I play against Black Wings, like, the thing that I'm most focused on is is the one or two Whirlwinds they got on the board because... They'll keep replenishing. They'll keep going down the line. They'll go from Sirocco to Shura to Bora to Zephyrus to whatever. And, you know, they'll keep going down the line. They'll keep replenishing their hand. They'll still get their Kalutes to hand. And to me, that's the worst part. You know, like that one, even if you just have one world on the board. Actually, I'm going to quote Capital G because it was a funny analogy he made. He said that, um, that dealing with one whirlwind is the equivalent of... <laughs> Um, if I remember correctly, he said it was like the equivalent of having HIV. It's good for a while, and you think you can handle it, but eventually it kills you. Or it was something. T it was something stupid like that. But, but to me, that's the equivalent. Like because you know you can keep that on the board. They're gonna keep replenishing their hand. They don't care. You know if they have if they open up with that one monster, you're screwed because they'll go down the ladder or they'll get their collude. I mean, let's 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 be serious. Who are we talking to? We're talking to a player that plays Royal Tribute and Mind Crush in the same deck. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Mind Crush is at three. Yeah. So, top of Mind Crush, you have cards like Royal Tribute that just get rid of your hand. You have cards like Dark that are going to get rid of your hand. <laughs> it's like That's a that big of a problem. Yes. Oh. Oh man. They search the card, they search the card, they search the card. Guess what? You know what's in their hand. You know how to play around it. That's a good point. So, a clue, you're not going to be putting anything in attack mode. You're not going to be trying to put anything over there unless you have a play for them. Yeah, no, I mean, well, that's the thing about Gravekeepers is that they're different. You have to play, I th in my opinion, at least, you have to switch up your style. To me, different than you'd play any other deck in Yu Gi Oh! Just because with, with Gravekeepers, they're such a, they're, they're unique because they're. You know that with GKs, or excuse me, with most decks, you you they rely on you know playing you know one or two back row you know and trying to attack you and just going you know full force head on, or trying to pop your stuff and then go full force head on and just attack you. Gravekeepers they will play their their field spell, set four back rows, set their monster. They don't give a fuck. So to me, yeah. you GKs you you I have true nade. <laughs> We're like, yes, there's no more heavy storm. Sweet. Back to setting four back row for half. <laughs> yeah, people uh uh it was Capital G actually. He said he made a video talking about it. he said set five format. Um no. And that's still not very true because you apparently you haven't played against GKs too much. You're like, I lost what was it? I lost five or six trap cards in my GKs. I made a video talking about this. I, I lost five or six trap cards and I still have I think fifteen traps in my gravekeepers. It's just stupid. Like, it's, it's just funny, because the whole set five thing is like, no more Heavy Storm? Because I made video after video talking about why Heavy Storm needed to be banned. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like, it's just hilarious that, you know, now it's gone, and, you know, GKs can kind of flourish now, because they lost, you know, their biggest enemy. You know, man, the biggest advocate of Heavy Storm coming back initially and getting rid of Trunade, because I'm like, Trunade, there's no ways really to stop it, your only outs are Solemn Judgment, and Dark High, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But, you know... After Heavy was out for a while and people just started caring, it's like, yeah, we have Road, we have Bribes, we have Solemn, we have other ways to answer it, we have Huge Revolution. Nobody wants to play some of those cards. <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, I, I, yeah, I get that, yeah. Like before, I'm like, people said, this is, all right, keep you, keep in mind, let's all keep in mind that this format existed. Heavy Storm at one, Trunade at one, Cold Wave at one. <laughs> Bullshit. One. 
let's remember that that format existed. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then they did right. They banned Cold Wave. Yeah. A banned Heavy Storm. And I was like, okay, this is fine. They bring back Monster Reborn. Not really caring. I have Grave Keepers. <laughs> um, they banned... Uh, or they bring back another space, though, to cover up for the heavy storm and the cold wave loss. I'm like, I think they're doing something wrong here. <laughs> but I'm fine with it. I'd rather deal with a true nade in two spaces at that point yeah. than one space, one heavy, one cold wave, and yeah, all this nonsense. Yeah. But after a while, and then they brought it to three. Oh, my God. They brought it to three space and a heavy, and they banned the true nade. I was like, yes, true nade's gone. Oh, God, they have three space and a heavy storm. <laughs> My problem with this is that I think space still needs to go back to two. I agree. I'm glad someone else finally sees sees a, sees that same point of view. It's not a matter of how many you actually play in your deck. It's not a matter of how many people, like how much back row people are actually playing. Because let's be fair, if you're all playing e dragons, there's not a lot of back row going around. You know, see, if only like dealt like for example, MSTs, night beams, dust tornadoes, you know. Hell, Delta Crow, Anti-Reverse, they would all be so much better if every time an E-Dragon player set a card, it was fucking Return, and yet they never set it for some reason, and you just end up MSTing an MST or something. It's not fair. It's just back having the option to play three space, and if you run against that one deck that has back row, you're just going to demolish them if you draw them. Yeah. This is why I'm bad to get a true nade now over Heavy Storm. Oh, yeah. If they miscalculate and they screw up, you get everything back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that. Maybe they could just misplay, but they still leave no chance for recovery. There's no chance to recover from a Heavy Storm. There's yeah. a chance to recover from a true nade if they misplay. Yeah, heavy I. Storm just says, all right. Just heavy storm into five back row. Even if they have the Starlight Road, guess what? By one for one, they put up a dragon on the board. And guess what? You get rid of it later. You run it over with a 2600 monster. You run it over with, what, Pearl or whatever. You run it over with Pearl. You run it over with Blaster. You run it over with just about any E Dragon. It's 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 funny because you know a lot of people will be quick to argue they'll be they'll take offense they'll be like no 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 tribute or er, tribute uh, you can just tell that I'm just great with words um <laughs> no it's like they they're quick to argue they're quick to say that you know that heavy storm is is not as bad as true they're like oh you can't starlight road it you know you can't do this you can't do that you can't huge revolution it you know it's it's it, to me it's it's apples to oranges because. You know, you hit the nail on the head. You're like, well, you know, that is true, but if they miscalculate, you get all your shit back. With Heavy, you know, yeah, they may miscalculate, or they may Starlight Road it, big deal, but it's still, like, if they if the Heavy goes off, there's no room for recovery. You just lost, you know, four or five of your traps. So, yeah, I'm glad someone else points that out. In general, what it lances, spaces, anything that you had a chance to, like, play back and answer to. But here's another thing people forget. They make cards to stop Trunade after it's banned, though. Rebound became a card. <laughs> Not a very good one. <laughs> I mean, hey, when you find that Medolce deck, you can work against that Tiramisu. Oh, Let yeah. me tell you. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm such a huge advocate of going back to one true nade double space format because it's just going to reap... People who are playing Dark Bribe are going to reap the benefits. Oh, if definitely. you play Bribe then, you were like, true nade needs to get banned. This needs to get banned. It's so OP. Uh, guys, I'm sorry that your only answer is to it is solemn judgment, but other people have cards called Dark Bribe, which is like an $8 card for a reason. You should have probably picked it up back then. Uh, <laughs> glad I was running three and not having a problem with Trunade. I, see, I never had a problem with Trunade, even when I didn't play Bribe, because I, I haven't, I recently just started playing Bribe. Like, I started playing Bribe because, uh, what was the guy's name? Uh, Alexander Thomas, he was playing in his Medolches back in Nats, you know? And he was like, if you, if you're playing a backer control deck, you have to play Bribe. I yep. It's like, I'm not sure I agree with that. I tested out two, and I was like, holy shit, this card is amazing. Just because it's like, you know, heavy, return, just throw any card you want at me. Okay, draw a card, you know, you lose. It's just, it's... 
I never understood why it was so good. Now, now I'm taking that back, definitely. Yeah, because here's the thing. People were like, oh, three, you're, you're OD. And I'm like, well, let's put it this way. A, it's a card that I really want to draw. <laughs> Every detrimental card in this format is usually not a monster because monsters can be dealt with normal back row. So what deals with the spells and the traps that are going to kill people? Dark Bribe. <laughs> This cards do that? People are like, oh, Super Poly, when it came out, it's so broken. It can't be counted. It can't do anything. Bottomless. <laughs> it's amazing like, how, how so many people don't grasp, you know, basic logic. You know, it's, it's just funny to me. Like, people just think. It's like, oh, no, you can't do this. Oh, uh, what? You're, you're giving them a plus one. It's a plus one for them. Um, no. Here's the thing. You shouldn't be playing Bribe. If it's a card that's not going to be detrimental to you at any point in time, people are like, oh, you're gonna, you're just gonna bribe, uh, uh you're gonna get your bribe spaced, okay? okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take, went, I'll take that one for one all day, yeah. They went a blind, they went blind space, which is a, a terrible play, which I will never agree with. Oh, yeah. um, they hit the good card. Guess it's time to go space heavy storm. Oh, I hit the bribe. cool. I'm gonna heavy storm now. Oh, okay. Run into another bribe. Oh, running Starlight Road. Um, <laughs> or even even go into uh, even even uh, heavy into let's say a Starlight Road. Yeah. Yeah. It's like okay. Oh yeah, no. Here, here was the best play. People were always like, "All right, he's gonna play that one Starlight Road now for this heavy storm." Let me just make sure I got my solemn judgment or my solemn warning ready. Okay, so I'm gonna go heavy with a solemn warning set or a solemn judgment set, and then he has like three back row, and one of them. He's not playing anything that's going to stop this. So if anything, we go solemn for solemn here because he's also going to waste his Starlight Road. Okay. Meanwhile, my back row is going to be like Starlight Road, X card, Dark Bribe, or Solemn Judgment. And now they go, all right, they go set one pass. I set three pass. Heavy Storm, Starlight Road. Oh, Warning? Okay. Or, or Solemn Judgment? Okay, because you, you think you were going to OD on me this turn. Um, have a card. Lose half your life points. <laughs> have fun. Yeah, I remember, you said it best, actually. I remember in one of your videos, you were like, uh, okay, so you're going to heavy storm me. Okay, draw a card. It's like, okay, you're going to, or no, excuse me, you are talking about Starlight Road. You're like, okay, so I'll bring out my Starlight now. It's like, okay, you're going to warning that, and then I'm going to bribe it. And then you're going to judgment my bribe. It's like, yeah, yeah, have fun with that, dude. <laughs> yeah, wasted what did you just waste now? You've wasted 5,000 life points. <laughs> three cards in the back row. <laughs> With two of which are already played, yeah. You can draw a card. Congratulations. <laughs> I actually had somebody, no lie, I actually had somebody do that one time. I was literally throwing my head back laughing the entire time. And I ended up beating him next turn because I had a spy face down. <laughs> it's like, all right, sweet, bro. You didn't kill the monster. You didn't have a play for it. You just heavy storm to heavy storm because you think that's the good play. And you're like, oh, I have background to protect it. Okay, yeah, we'll make the good play. Um, did you beat? No? Okay. And here were other people's reasoning. It's a plus one for your opponent. What if they draw an out? What if this that? Well, if you're activating Dark Bribe, let's be serious. The card should be hurting you in some sort of way. Yeah. It should be going on a space that's going to hit your valley. Or a space that's going to hit the card that you need to save yourself. Or it's going to be on a heavy storm. Or it's going to be on a giant grenade. Or it's going to be on foolish burial. Yes, you should probably dark bribe a foolish burial against certain decks. <laughs> yeah, like zombies or whatever, yeah. Did it at Nats against Jerry Wang when he was playing plants. Nice. Let's, if I didn't do it, I wouldn't have had him down to the three outs that he needed at that point. Which were Spore, Bulb, and Caius. <laughs> One of them would have been in the graveyard with that foolish burial. Well, let's be serious. He would have me right there. Instead, of he had to try to top deck one of them. Which he ended up top decking Kai. It's like a little piece of shit. But, I mean, <laughs> shit happens. Uh, like, I, wait, you, had, you got a Nats invite last season, didn't you? Uh, I did not go to Nats this year. No. I did not have an invite. I didn't get to go because I didn't have the... Uh, I didn't have a room, so I couldn't actually get there to go into the LCQs. Okay. I, I easily wrecked all the E Dragons and made it into Nats, no problem. Oh, Winning a 4 0 is not hard. Yeah, uh, a 4 0, yeah. I, I remember. Uh, oh, no, <laughs> I, I totally just lost my train of thought. That's great. Like, yeah, being E Dragons, like, that's. 
It, it's yeah. gr it's great. Uh -huh. <laughs> Seriously, not. I don't know why people aren't playing it, but it's not that hard. It's like before they were playing Ravine, or they were playing a one of Ravine. But the point being, if you're dark bribing a card, it should be a detrimental card. Oh, what happens if they draw an out? You're giving up a plus one. You've wasted a card in your back row to get rid of their card, but they get another one to get it right back. You know, the card's worth money for a reason. <laughs> no, we're not talking about magic formula. We're talking about a card that does something. And what <laughs> was the fact that you remember when TG's won uh, Nationals? Yeah. Okay. They were playing two Dark Bribes in their deck. They were. They were playing two or three, and the card shot up in price. And I'm like, I'm glad I have my Ultras. <laughs> but I have like six Supers in my book right now. Because now those $8 cards go to 12 to 15 And nobody wanted to believe me. Why? Because I'm not known as a player in the community yet. I haven't done anything big. But that doesn't mean that I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, what if they draw the out? Well, guess what? If they got it, they got it. You were dark bribing a card that was going to kill you anyway. So force the top deck into another possible out they may not have in their deck at all. Or you live with the consequences. If you were going to die, you're going to die. You might as well try to have an out to it. Yeah, I mean, you know, you might as well have the out. I mean... You, for all you know, they couldn't. They might not even have like another out. They might have. That could be like their last ditch effort, and they might have just lost that last ditch effort. Yeah. See, that's my thing. Sure. There's been times that, yeah. Oh well, your bribe gave me the side that that I needed to win. Okay. Well, guess what? If I didn't bribe it, you were still going to win. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things where um, it's more of a. Oh no, I'm not gonna say it's like an. Ah, uh, I'm trying to find a way to put this where it's basically like an anti win more card where it's like if you play it. You know, and it backfires on you. Chances are, you were in that losing position in the first place, so it's not like it really matters. It's not like you're just gonna like needlessly bribe a bottomless that doesn't. It's like, yeah, what is this monster gonna accomplish for me right now? I went one for one with his with his back row. Okay, why do I really want to give him a card to do fifteen hundred damage right now? No, I don't. Oh, right, it's like okay, I'll get, I'm gonna flip my spy, and they're gonna bottomless my spy. Yeah, I'll bribe that. No, it's stupid. <laughs> They're dumb for not hitting the target that you're bringing out, which is probably a recruiter that can search. Yeah. Because smart, they will never bottomless the spy. Yeah. The spy, I, attack mode, it's stuck in attack mode, and it's not going to do anything for the rest of the turn. They're going to, if they're smart, they'll bottomless the descendant, assailant, or recruiter that you're going to bring out. Yeah. Or your Siniwa, for that matter. <laughs> All right, can we, can we come down? Wait, 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 wait. What is it called? No, I was, I was joking. I said, no, the, the Siniwa, now it is. Oh, but, that's what he named the uh, the big ass. Yeah, three. yeah, G K Sinewa. No, but I was joking there because like, who would honestly who would use spies if I could bring out a Sinewa? You can't. Not fifteen hundred attack or less. Oh, that's right. But you can search it with recruiter. I was switch. I was switching uh, their t his attack and defense for a second there. But like, yeah. like in a in a in an ideal world, who would do that? Was my point. Immediately. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you don't get his effect though. Like that was my whole point. Is you don't get his effect. Back. You just need a twenty five beater. Sweet. 2,000 meter. Oh, what? Well, valley. Never mind. Yes. <laughs> Always look at the valley. Yeah, my bad. I don't know. It, to me, you know, a spy, you know, your god card. Recruiter, your, you know, your heart of the deck. I'm just glad that they they gave us, you know, one more monster. Because odds are, we're not, GK's, odds are not going to get any more support, like, ever. Like, this is probably it. But I'm just glad that they finally gave us the boss monster, at least. I feel that, that GK's deserve. So, the last time they gave us support in one pack, it was four cards. They gave us Priestess, they gave us um, Descendant, they gave us, um, oh no, I'm lying, they actually gave us just Recruiter once. That was the part they gave us with that. Yeah. But anyway, before that, they gave us four cards. They gave us Descendants, Priestess, Stell, Visionary. Four cards. They gave us four cards. Then they threw in Recruiter later in Star Strike Blast. So, I'm not sure if this is going to be one of those one card supports and if it is it's a terrible one card support and it should be written off uh you see i i, I still disagree i mean i've been winning games off of Saniwa. well i'll sacrifice the and the recruiter for Saniwa, get commandant discard commandant get the valley and then use well like have Saniwa's effect have all my opponent's monsters lose 2k and attack over for game i've had so many games like that it's just i think it's a great card you can do the same thing with Visionary. It's like, all right, I'm going to bring out a big-ass ball and monster who's going to gain attack for every Gravekeeper in my graveyard. 
and is going to constantly protect himself while also getting a search off recruiter and getting all this nonsense. It's like, yes, I do all that. Visionary is so much better than Simiwa, though. Even if he's not making them lose the attack, he's gaining more for every keeper. So he gets stronger as the game goes on. To me, he, it's rolling the dice with, with Visionary. Like, I, some people tell me they're like, no, that it's not rolling the dice, that makes no sense. Here's the way I see it, though. Is like, if you sacrifice, you know, and you only have, like, let's say, two or three Grave Keepers in your graveyard, it's like, okay, he gains 300. Yay. He gains 100. He gains per. What? He gains 200 per. Oh, wait, what did I say? 100. Oh, phew. Yeah, it shows you how on the ball I am today. It's been a long day. No, I mean, it's still, it's good attack, but to me, I, I would rather have my opponents, like, lose the attack. Like, I'd rather hurt, hurt my opponent, but I don't know. That's just, it's... Well, again, situational. What if they have no monsters? Good point. Like, to me, they're situational in their own ways, but... They are. They're both absolutely situational. I would just personally rather have something that's going to be able to protect itself from destruction, regardless of how that destruction is. What is it? It's a bottomless. Guess what? It's not getting removed. It's staying on the field, and you've just made him larger. <laughs> I, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I've 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 played. All right, all right I'm gonna go. I'm gonna tack into it. All right, I'm gonna collude it. Okay, I'm gonna gonna discard my card, save him. He now gets pumped. So next turn, I'm just gonna run you over, even if you collude. <laughs> well, I you can say the same. Like if the, the the whole collude thing, like you you can say the same. Where like for example, okay, you Sine was effect. Um, you lose all 2,000 attacks, so that odds are that collude is not really going to matter. You know, if you have, like, double or triple, then yeah, then, well, you know, epic clap to you. But, I mean, if you just have that one, then odds are it's not going to make, you know, a good amount of difference. <clears throat> no, completely understood. I just think that if they're going to leave it with a one-card support, I'm going to be upset because oh, they yeah. deserve more support Definitely. than what's currently there. They need something because, like, we can't support playing Regulus. Sure, we just don't have our field spell, but we don't want to wait till all three field spells are gone. What if we want to throw it back while we have our field spell on the field currently? We're not going to play a random 1700 monster that doesn't fit our deck to throw back a field spell into our deck. Yeah, I mean, I think that's... That. I'm really, not going to play Cycle either. I mean, to me, like, I, I guess that in a sense, like, with Konami logic, and keep in mind, I'm going to emphasize that, Konami logic, they kind of did that with Priestess, I think it was, with GK Priestess, like the whole... <laughs> Oh, logic with Konami. No, 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 there's not. You know, oh, hey, let's put six cents to one. Duh. Or no, let's let's create let's create a bunch of elemental dragons that, you know, just happen to create a great deck. And let's happen to throw uh, Mecha Phantom Beast Drago Sack in the exact same set because we're a bunch of dumbasses. Well, here's the thing. When E-Dragons played, and I went on DX, and I ran against it, and I never saw the deck before. It went right into Draco Sack, and it went on and did all this nonsense, and I'm like, okay, where's your hand? <laughs> you don't have Super Rejew? Okay, you lose. <laughs> all right, now they make other stuff that makes it better. Oh, the seven stored. Why does that card exist? I don't know. That makes what? no sense to me. All the seven star support exists. I don't know. It's dumb. <laughs> like, if you're going to make a good deck like that, Oh, yeah, everything's a rare. It's all within reach, really. Why are all these rares like eight bucks? <laughs> Why is these Emptiness a $15 card as a common? That pisses me off. They need to make Vandy's Emptiness. So, like, they need to reprint it or something. I mean, it's going to get reprinted. That's inevitable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was actually really happy with it because I'm like, all right, this card used to be a quarter. Uh, it used to kind of fluctuate within side decks, so it wasn't terrible. It's not a bad card. I just, Gravekeepers don't need it. And this? Royal Oppression. You want to bring balance to this format? Give me one Royal Oppression. Thank you! <laughs> I made a ten reasons, like, probably, like, five months ago, I said Royal Oppression needed to come back. I made ten reasons why it should have, and still nobody agrees with me. That's because people are like, oh, no, you can just throw it in any other deck. What about a deck that special summons out of its asshole, and you can do all this nonsense? I'm like, oh, good. Show me any dragon deck that actually wants to play Royal Oppression. <laughs> yeah. There's a big difference between playing a Royal Oppression and playing a Vanity's Emptiness. Oh, yeah. Vanity's Emptiness will hurt you so much more right now, and I think it's going to get hit to one on this next list. That would that would irritate me, but I could understand it. It's kind of like it's kind of like putting Tribute to one. I don't agree with it, but I can understand it. I can understand it. It doesn't really make a difference to me. The card was dead more often than not. I'm fine with it at one. I honestly used to put main one, side one back in Dark World days. It's like... 
Yeah, it's good enough to still play one. It's bad enough that I don't want to have it in my hand against the dead matchup, and I'd rather have something useful in an out. It doesn't hurt me. I'm fine with it at one. The fact that people think that that card is a win condition is just dumb and beyond me. Oh, yeah. Okay. Guess what? If you know what you're up against, why haven't you put your monsters on the field? Why haven't you made sure you try to kill me? Or why are you playing a deck when you know this card exists? Yeah. I mean, your entire hand. It was like, um, or no, I, I was talking about uh, oppression, like my 10 reasons, and people said, no, no, it's it just you, it, you draw it and it's just auto win. I said, okay, talk to me whenever there's uh, a, a six samurai Sheen and three other Sams on the board and you top deck the Royal Oppression. It's like, yeah, how, how's that working out for you? Not even that. Oh, you top deck the card, you win. Um, no. Fairly certain that mm, MST is at three. <laughs> <laughs> Not 100% positive. <laughs> Fairly certain. It's like, yeah, no, not not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that it's at three. So, yeah. Not and we have three Dust Tornadoes, three Twisters. Oh, this is this is what I said. It's uh, three MST, three Nova Venom Extermination, three Twister, three Dust Tornado, three Catastrophe, and three Night Beam. That is 18 cards right there off the top of my head. Well, Twister, I believe, is for spell cards. Oh, well, yeah. So, 15 cards. So, okay, 15. Fair. <laughs> Still, 15 cards off the top of my head that can all easily counter. You know, it's, just, it's stupid. Like, people, oh, we, we don't have any, you know, we don't, other than MST and, and Night Beam, we don't have any, any good, you know, spell and trap removal. It's like, you know, have you looked around at all? I'm just wondering. If somebody wants to do something, what they can do is they can make another Royal Oppression or another Royal card uh, yeah. and just make it a thousand. All right, I'll play it at a thousand. It's still good. Yeah. Eight hundred is too small. All right, I'll pay a thousand. I don't care. Yeah. But it's not an auto win card. I who think? Oh, you draw it and then you go off and then you play it. Okay, and then I go MST and it's gone, and then I proceed to go off. <laughs> Just saying, MST is at three. Why is depression gone? Yeah, I don't know. The the thing that I. Oh my god. See, this is something else that, like, nobody... A lot of people agree with me, and a lot of people don't, but I talked about, you know, Eradicator being hit to one, and I say that it shouldn't have. What do you think? I don't know. I feel like, because of Big Eye, I can understand getting hit to one. Big Eye should have been banned. Big Eye should have never been created. I think they, that Yu-Gi-Oh! should have been better with their typing and their uh, attributing. Because of cards like Eradicator. They need to fully think about what they're doing when they make cards, like Magic. Wizards thinks about everything. Their game is so in detail because they have so many different formats that ev almost every card can be used in. Let's keep that in mind. There's just about everything they have to think about now. They have to think about how to properly word every card and what effects things are going to do and what things can go with them. Like, when they made Jace the Mind Sculptor and Stoneforge Mystic in the same format, they apologized to their player base. Konami? Oh, Man. we made these big-ass dragons, and we just... Yeah, we're just going to ban the four babies the next format. And that's it. Yeah, it's, it, oh, well, it's super rigid, to be fair. They continue to make more support for those dragons. It, oh, see, it just Konami lacks so much logic on so many different ways. I mean... It's going to be hard to make. All right, let's make a whole deck that's level 7 that makes these cards. Oh, let's make that level 7 monster a, an Eradicator target, too. Yeah, that that was stupid as shit. I don't care what anyone says. The fact that they made that, that rank 7, they made it an Eradicator target. Like, for, like, um, I just don't, it just, it makes so many players, like, to me, E-Dragons are a deck that, you know, have so many bad players winning their games that they shouldn't have won. Like, here, I'll give you an example. I was playing uh, with a different v uh, variant of GKs. I forget w which one it was. It was when, um... Right, so I had a Valley, I had a Bribe, a Book of Moon, a Solemn Morning, and a Stardust, and a Spy... Or an, and a Cowboy in defense position on the board. And he... I, if I remember correctly, he, he blaster popped and then went off, ended up making a Drago, two Draco Sacks and a Big Eye. I'm like, you should not have won that fucking game. You know what I mean? I'm guessing he Draco I'm guessing he blaster popped the warning. Yeah, no, 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 he blaster popped the, uh, the, well, he, he MST'd, I think it was, he MST'd the warning, and then he blaster popped the Necrovalley. <laughs> what? 
blind MSTs. Uh, people think they're so good. Yeah. <laughs> it just, it drives me nuts. Just like how many games? Like to me, people say like I play Dark Worlds as a side deck. Like I just think that Dark Worlds are fun, so I play them sometimes. People say that the Dark World is a deck that you know makes so many bad players good. To me, I think E Dragons are above Dark World and the fact of you know like making bad players think they're good. But I, don't know. I will I will give you that. You know why? Because I actually tried to play Dark World. And I actually had to sit there and thinking every once in a while, like, which card do I really want to search for? Yeah, Whereas exactly. Dragons, dragons are a skillless deck. Thank you. They're about as skillless as Samurais. <laughs> <laughs> My brother plays Sams, and he, he hates it when people make fun of Sams, but let's be honest. Some, some decks just have a play button. Dragons are one of them. Sure, there's different plays that may require skill and may require thinking about, like, which XC do I go in to bait out certain plays? That's one thing. The, the the mind game is one way to go about it. But the deck just says go. Knowing how to play around different matchups is what's make you a skilled player, not your deck. GKs, people think it's all the same. Edit, so, oh, flip Spy, Get Descendant, or Get Recruiter, or something Descendant. No. There are some, well, hang on. Let's do it. <laughs> into a second spy just for the mere fact that you can't get over it, it's behind <laughs> to me that there's a different like some people say oh with gks they're so skillless there are certain times when you flip a spy get a descendant pop the back row and it's, it's the same stuff and then there are other times where you go into wind ups and meister just to get your spies effect you know what i mean like there are different times mm -hmm. but people don't look at it that way they're like oh I see the play all the time. I'm like, yeah, you just play Royal Tribute and win. Oh, really? I've Royal Tribute people for their whole hand. And guess what? Because they're playing Frog Monarchs, they come back. They go, all right, Treeborn, Caius, remove your monster. Oh, I like Frog Monarchs, to be honest. Like, I'm a huge fan of Frog, Mon Frog Monarchs. Power Filter Summon Limit. Shut up. <laughs> I like, I, skill Drain. Like, I, okay, I win. Like, flat out. Unless you have MST, I win. Like, that's one of my favorite things. It's like, you know, Gozen or, or Skill Drain. I'll just, I'll just say Power Filter. Go ahead. Try <laughs> to summon something. I dare you. <laughs> wait, wait, Power Filter? Wait, that's the uh, that's the one where you and your... Thousand or less cannot be special summoned. What? Thousand or less cannot be special summoned. Damn. You would spell. <laughs> wait, what's the... They're, they're, I think it's uh, uh, Coliseum. That one Coliseum card where you... Can't have more than I can? I yeah. don't know. I like that card. Oh, like you set a spy. It's like, okay. Like, or, well, no, it wouldn't work against frog marks, but it would work against other decks, too, like E-Dragons, for example. Like, I'll set my spy, and it's like, okay, you can summon one dragon. That's it. I like summon limit better because you can just go, all right, they, they go, um, they try to go into a black rose play, and you just have one back row, and they've gotten rid of the warning and everything, and they don't have anything else. So they're just like, all right, cool, I can just go off Black Rose the rest of his field because it's a back row and it's um, a monster that's face up that you know or something. So they go, all right, I'm going to summon Debris Dragon. Effect. All right, cool. Special summon this thing. All right, summon limit. Well, yes, it remembers board state. So by the way, now you, you can't, you, yeah. Your Debris Dragon is dickless and so is the card you brought out. <laughs> effect. Oh, dude, summon limit. This card is badass. Yeah. Why? What you summon twice? Cool. My turn? Awesome. Summon Dinah? Pack. <laughs> Wait a minute. Like, I, I feel like Peter Griffin right now, where he's like, why are we not funding this? Like, why is summon limit not like, not like a mainstream card? This card is so good. Because everyone's playing the same deck. Damn, this would be good against against dragons. It'd be good against Sam's. It'd be good. Damn, this would like wreck the fucking meta. It's it's good against zombies, it's good against dragons, it's good against sands, it's good against frognarks, it's good against all this nonsense it was good against. What, did, wh why are people not playing this? <laughs> anybody who's watching this right now, anybody who is a fan of mine or is you know is a subscriber of mine or a subscriber of Raps, why are you not playing Summon Limit? Like, really? Uh, is they're probably playing dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Or no, uh, or uh, I have a subscriber of mine like plays spell books all the time. Like so, maybe that's like one of the reasons. Another thing, they go scapegoat. All I'm... right, summon limit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, that's just one of those things you just laugh at. Like, by the way, here, scapegoat, like a quick side note. I want to see goat control be legal again. Yeah, good luck with that. Oh, no, I'm not saying it'll happen. I'm not, like, predicting or demanding it. You still have all the banned cards that are never going to come back for it, like uh, tribe infecting virus. Uh, no, 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 no. Ah, see, that's that's the one thing people say to me when I say I want go control eagle. When I say go control eagle, I mean I want the... I know what you mean. I'm just saying the cards that made it what it was will yeah. never be back. Oh, I think that if it would still be able to, it would probably top regionals if they put if they brought back a Metamorphosis and Thousand Eyes. I think there's a possibility it would, it would at least chop regionals. Metamorphosis and Thousand Eyes were back. This my scapegoat would be at one still. <laughs> ah, I like well for one like I'd be bad. Scapegoat should not have been should not have been a one for for one. Sca scapegoat should not have ever been a one. That that was a stupid idea. I mean, is it, does it, does it continuously, you know, does it continuously, you know, annoy you with tokens? Yeah, but you can only sit on those tokens for so long. Oh, yeah? I, I know many Frognark decks that would have uh, played. Uh, fair enough. I'll give you that one. Like, I played, I'm playing three, uh, currently I'm playing three, uh, scapegoats in my spirit deck, so I, I'll give you that much. It's like, all right, cool, I'm gonna scapegoat at the end phase, cool. Um, now I'm just gonna summon Fishboard Blaster, Synchro, Formula, Cool. Synchro Catastrophe. Fishborg was way broke. I'll admit, Fishborg was way broke. Really glad that's gone. Oh, I, it, really glad that's gone. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I remember when like ah, I'm stuttering over my words now. That's fantastic. Um, no, I can. Oh, it is. It is five oh eight. Oh wait, you. <laughs> five. Well. Oh, God. Wait, you said you had to leave at, like, 4.30, right? Yeah. Sorry. I mean, I told you I could talk about GKs for an hour. <laughs> oh, wow. There you go. <laughs> we did just that, didn't we? Well, we did a lot more than that, but... Yeah. All right, so um, I guess we'll just wrap it up here. So thanks a lot for being on the show, Raph. I appreciate it. Hey, not a problem. If you guys need me, um, I'm available. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah you guys, oh. will, like, next week, uh, if Avery can do the show, all three of us can be on uh, Skype or whatever. Hey, that's fine by me. Hey, guys. If you enjoyed the show, thank you guys uh, for listening. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate the uh, special guest. Yeah. Uh, great. Subscribe on uh, all of our channels. Yeah. And uh, thank you guys. All right. Catch you guys later. Next Friday. Peace.